Hey guys, what's going on? Lane back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about The Summon of the Gods. The Summon of the Gods is a French animated film based on the Japanese manga series of the same name. It follows Japanese photographer Makoto Fukumachi, who's dissatisfied with the shots he'd taken during an aborted climb of Mount Everest when he encounters a man believed to be a famous climber named Habu Joji who went missing years ago. He suspects Habu to be in possession of a camera that used to belong to George Mallory, who led one of the first expeditions to reach the summit of Everest, and this motivates Fukumachi to investigate Habu's whereabouts so that he can find the truth about what happened to both Habu and Mallory. I haven't read the manga, so I don't know how faithful of an adaptation it is, but just speaking from a purely cinematic point of view, this movie was fantastic. Everything from its atmosphere to characters to the animation itself tied beautifully to the story. It almost feels like there's two movies playing in one due to the duality involved with the two lead characters, which I assume is a stylistic choice that's inspired from the manga. And the fact that it's able to pull off both arcs so well is a true testament to the quality of the work involved with everything else in this movie. The first character character Makoto Fukumachi is someone who is obsessed with chasing the next big story. He sees something in Habu Joji that nobody else does and that he recognizes him as a sort of mythological figure, and this recognition is doubled by the fact that he has an artifact that could prove to be of major historical significance. We see the struggles he goes through trying to put pieces together as he looks at old news tapes, interviews various subjects who were associated with Habu, and deals with his boss telling him to stop looking into it saying that it's a waste of time. He's a very real character trying to do something something great in his life while doing his job at the same time. And in this respect, I like how he transitioned from wanting to get his hands on the camera to simply wanting to find Habu and help record his quest to scale Everest. He became less focused on wanting a big story and more on wanting to check on Habu's well-being. The journalist aspect helps introduce him in a meaningful context, and Habu helps bring out the human element in him as events proceed. Now, while I think Fukumachi was good overall, it's Habu Joji who easily steals the show. He has a passion in life as Fukumachi does, though in his case it involves climbing, and we learn about this through various flashbacks that cut back and forth between the two leads, and it's through these that we see how serious about climbing he really is. He always wants to be the first to climb the summit of a mountain, and gets frustrated when he has to deal with competition. The event that cemented his character for me is when he scolds a group of preppy, inexperienced climbers who make a joke out of who to save from an accident while climbing. Habu knows exactly what kind of dangers he's getting into when he climbs, something that only his competition understands. I sympathize with Habu when other people took umbrage with his opinions, resulting in him being alienated by society and eventually abandoning it so he can focus on the one thing that matters to him, which is climbing. What I like most about Habu is the connection he shares with Fukumaji when they finally meet. They both have a passion and are obsessed with chasing it where no one else will. But there's also a key difference. Where Fukumaji has a squeaky clean past, Habu's is much darker as he's haunted by the death of someone who was close to him. Habu sees Fukumaji as little more than a journalist at first glance, but realizes the parallels between him and that close friend of his from all those years ago. This brings an opportunity for redemption after being down on his luck in all that time since those flashbacks, and it was inspiring to see both characters chasing their dreams regardless of what others thought. On that note, there's a theme with how both of them do what no one else does, and people ask why they don't just stay at home and live normal lives. Simply put, the reason is they feel compelled to do so. Habu in particular mentions something to the effect of that climbing is the only thing that makes him feel alive. This makes sense the more watch the movie. Habu scales all manner of European Alps and other mountains by himself in the middle of winter while Fukumachi goes to incredible lengths to try and find one specific camera. There's no way the average person can possibly relate to these kinds of goals, and I think that kind of obsessive passion really is what makes the two work so well together. Now it's at this point I have to mention all the little things that make this movie so great. Being an animated movie means it has certain stylistic choices which make it fundamentally different from live action ones, and after having seen this, I'm convinced that this movie, as is, wouldn't have worked if it wasn't animated. First, the actual animation used in the movie is breathtaking. Whether in the busy streets of Tokyo or in a small cafe in Kathmandu, every scene is crammed with detail to make it as lifelike as possible. Of course, it goes without saying that the mountains are beautiful as well, with skies painted in bright colors making the vistas a feast for the eyes. In spite of the beauty of the visuals, I was surprised at how simple its presentation ended up being, and I say that in the most praiseworthy way possible. I 
think it is great when an animated movie can pull off having a variety of colors and effects happening on screen, but for the kind of story this movie is trying to tell, which is of a serious nature, I think it was good that the filmmakers took a more muted approach with the visuals. It adds a unique flair to the narrative without distracting the audience from it. It perfectly complements the atmosphere of the movie as well, which is bleak in tone. Mountains are desolate with the only sounds being harsh winds blowing through the valleys in between and nary a hint of humanity in sight. It's essentially no man's land, which makes Habu and later Fukumaji's tracks that much more terrifying. There's an underlying sense of danger that's conveyed in just about every scene that occurs outside of a community, which adds tension to the story and makes the audience want to root for the characters that much more. This is topped off by the dangerous events that do occur in the story, ranging from nearly falling to death to running from avalanches. These scenes are so good they reach Hitchcockian levels of suspense. There was more than one occasion where I gasped out loud out of concern for the characters involved. In my opinion, that's when you know a movie works, when you care about the characters so much that you audibly react to them without even thinking about it. And once again, the realistic animation style benefits the suspense in this regard. Since it doesn't glamorize the danger, it allows the audience to focus on the character's struggles. That's not to say the animation's boring to look at. There's a small handful of scenes that employ a more artistic style to show how the cold slowly creeps into characters the longer they continue their journey, which works well. It adds more tension even when they're not climbing, as the characters are always in constant danger. And it seems that even when characters aren't climbing at all, there's still some sort of stakes at play. Habu regularly competes with a man named Hase Suneo, even though they only speak to each other once. Habu is always exercising to stay in shape, and gets bothered when Hase is mentioned on the radio for accomplishing something while he himself is busy working a menial job. There's so much else that I could say about how amazing this movie is, but I fear I'd be repeating myself. The only complaint that I have, and it's more of a nitpick than anything, is that it would have been nice to have a Japanese dub option. And don't get me wrong, the original French audio is great, but with so much Japanese content present in the story and it being based on a manga, I think it'd be neat to have a Japanese dub available to give that extra level of authenticity. Overall, The Summit of the Gods is a brilliant animation that explores the inner drive that pushes people to perform extraordinary feats and keeps its audience on the edge of their seats in doing so. If you enjoy animated movies and you're looking for one that has a more mature story and a realistic artistic style to it, you definitely have to check this one out. This one blew me away more than any other animation I've seen this year. It has believable characters, thrilling set pieces, stunning art, and is loaded with thematic material. One could say this is the peak of animation, but as Fukumaji says, once you've reached the summit, all that's left is to keep going. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of The Summit of the Gods. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American Western, The Power of the Dog. Bye bye!